So I think maybe the first thing to talk about this week, I'm going to start with actually a very brief continuation of my discussion about Taylor Hall last week. And I have to say that really a lot of people, I think that discussed it in other venues other than the YouTube channel, didn't really understand exactly what it was that we were trying to do here. And so I talked about how we were trying to look for confirmed sources, you know, that we could actually use to verify whether or not Taylor Hall has the kind of reputation that, uh, that a lot of people seem to think that he has. And what I got, a, a lot of what I got out of people <laughs> in some of those forums, there's a lot of people coming saying, it's like, oh, well, you know, uh, my second cousin three times removed uh, knows Bob Nicholson and he said this. Or, oh, I know a bunch of NHLers and uh, they said this. And, of course, nobody's going to give any, like, actual names to those kinds of sources. And I just got to tell you that, uh, you know, if you're thinking that this is the kind of place where I'm going to come and talk about, you know, a bunch of rumors that are fed to me by a, bu by a bunch of people who, quite frankly, so far as I'm concerned, are every bit as likely just, you know, just bullshitting me as they are to be telling me something that they actually know or something that they actually heard, uh, you're coming to the wrong place. <laughs> you know, we're not clout chasing here. That's not what we're doing here. And so if that's really the only thing that you can think of to do with these kinds of conversations, well, then you're going to need to find a different place to go do that because that place is not here. And so with all of that clarified, I think maybe what I would like to do is actually go on and start talking about the topic that I actually had in mind. And that, of course, was the trade deadline. And the trade deadline had an awful lot to do with why we were talking about Taylor Hall and whether or not he had the kind of bad reputation that a lot of people seem to insist that he has. And so, of course, there was that rumor, and it was very strongly rumored, that the Oilers were a strong contender to go out and lock up Taylor Hall services for the remainder of this season. And that wound up not happening. Instead, he wound up going to Boston in an absolute cherry deal for the Boston Bruins. I mean, not only did they get Taylor Hall for the remainder of the season, but they got Curtis Lazar, presumably for the rest of this season, and I believe that Curtis Lazar would still be considered a restricted free agent when his contract comes up again. So they'll have an opportunity to try to make something good out of Curtis Lazar for quite a long time after that, and they got him for like a prospect and a second round draft pick. And not even like a highly ranked prospect, like, you know, considered to be a fairly middling prospect. So that was a fantastic deal for the, uh, for, <laughs> for the Boston Bruins, great for them. And of course, um, you know, the Oilers, they didn't do very much at all. So we went into this trade deadline and we were being fed stories about how, you know, maybe the Oilers are gonna bring in Taylor Hall. Maybe the Oilers were going to bring in Mike Hoffman. I mean, thank God that didn't happen, but it was a name that was being discussed. You know, there were even people that were out there saying that Boston was ready to move Jake DeBrusque. Who, in my opinion, like for my money, I think that if the Oilers had made a move at the deadline, and they could have picked any deal, any player that I would have wanted to bring into this team, actually Jake DeBrusque would have been the guy to bring in, in my opinion. But none of it happened, and in fact, all that the, uh, the Oilers got was they got Kulikov out of the New Jersey Devils, you know, a reasonable second or third pairing defenseman. Helps the team a little bit, but definitely not in all of the ways that a lot of people hoped he was. I mean, if this team isn't already at a place where it can go out and win a Stanley Cup this season, Kulikov is probably not the player that's actually going to get you there. Now, I do think that it is safe to say the trade deadline day just isn't what it used to be anymore. And it hasn't been that way for a long time. And as a matter of fact, not only is trade deadline day not the day that it used to be, but really the, the free agent frenzy in July, or whenever it was this year, I mean this year it definitely wasn't in July, I don't remember when it was, but typically it happens on July 1st. <laughs> Neither one of those two days are what they used to be. Uh, it's actually at the point now where I, I wonder why TSN even bothers, you know, to have like a full day, you know, hours long broadcast of these things anymore because it seems like these days nothing happens. And this year was very much the same thing, but of course it wasn't always that way. Now, one thing that a lot of people were looking back towards 
coming up to this trade deadline is a lot of people are looking back to trade deadline day of 2006. I think the people were actually looking to this trade deadline day as a day when you know the, the lineup was going to be shaken up and going to redefine this team for a long time. And frankly, it's actually been a very long time since the Oilers have done anything even remotely like that. And you know, the, the, the deadline day that a lot of people were comparing this to was in 2006. And so that was the day where in the days leading up to the trade deadline, like those few days beforehand, you know, the Oilers very much did. They went out and they took, you know, they took a lineup that was on the cusp of making the playoffs, and they did manage to put them over the top. In fact, they managed to put them so over the top that they came within literally one goal of winning the Stanley Cup, as I'm sure everybody remembers from that season. And so that season they went out, you know, they added Dwayne Rollison, you know, they added Sergei Samsonov, they added Yaroslav Spachek, and these are the names that everybody remembers. But the names that everybody kind of forgets that they added leading up to that trade deadline, I mean, they added Rem Murray, you know, they added Dick Tarnstrom. Uh, Dick Tarnstrom, as I recall, didn't really see a whole lot of action, not compared to what he was expected to see. But it was a pretty significant shakeup of the team, and the team did very well. But if you want to actually look at a trade deadline that redefined the team over the long term, <laughs> unfortunately, the 2006 trade deadline day was not that day. And as a matter of fact, I think that the day that you would look at would probably unfortunately be the 2007 trade deadline day. And so leading up to that trade deadline day, pretty much everybody knew that the Oilers were not going to make the playoffs. I mean, that season, kind of that last bid to try to make the playoffs by adding a player, didn't happen at the trade deadline. That happened, I think it must have been a couple of months earlier when the Oilers went and took Peter Nedved off of waivers from the Philadelphia Flyers. When he showed up in Edmonton, I mean, he had a goal in his first game, which I can tell you for certain because I was there, but then didn't really do very much for the whole remainder of the season. People kind of had to accept that Peter Nedved was not the player that he had once been. And he wasn't even the player that he had once been for Edmonton. But Peter Nedved wasn't enough to get them back into playoff contention. And so as the trade deadline approached, the Oilers moved out Marc-Andre Bergeron and they brought in Denis Grabeshkov. And that was kind of for a lot of people in the media, that was when they said, okay, the Oilers have given up. Like they are, they know they're not going to make the playoffs. And so that was the same year that they had been working so hard to try to get Ryan Smith re-signed to a deal. And then of course, trade deadline day arrived. No deal did get done with Ryan Smith to extend that contract. And so they, you know, they, they shipped him out and they brought back a couple of uh, a couple of draft picks and a couple of players, one of whom was Robbie Nielsen. So they moved fewer players on that trade deadline day, and they wound up redefining the team over a much longer period of time than the 2006 trade deadline did. Because I'm sure, as everybody remembers, most of those guys that they acquired at the deadline on two th in 2006, you know, they never came back. And not only did they not come back, but a lot of the guys who had already been here never came back. And so Sergei Samsonov, he went off and he signed in Montreal. If I remember correctly, I think that Yaroslav Spachak also signed in Montreal the next season. Then of course guys like Mike Pekka and more famously Chris Pronger, like they were just gone. And so while everybody was hoping that we were going to be able to keep together you know, some very important parts of that 2006 Stanley Cup, you know, runner-up team and build on it and win a Stanley Cup, you know, that turned out to not be the case. And of course then what we see from the next year was that that was the year that actually did redefine the team over the long term and not in a good way. People had kind of hoped that the 2006 trade deadline would re redefine the team in a good way, but the 2007 deadline wound up actually redefining the team over the long term in a way that left them it literally took the heart and soul out of the team. So there were plenty of good, hard-working players that were left you know, after Ryan Smith departed, but no, nobody there that worked even nearly as hard as he did. And so what you were really left with was a team that didn't have the same spirit. You know, they didn't have the same fighting spirit. Honestly, they didn't really work as hard. 
And so a lot of talented players came in, like, say, Sam Gagne, Andrew Cogliano. You know, this was before even the, uh, you know, the, 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 the draft lottery years. And so I suppose that the point that I'm trying to raise is that even though it's kind of disappointing to not see the Oilers go out and get a top six forward at the trade deadline, you know, to not go out and do something that really might have, you know, at least redefined perceptions of this team throughout the remainder of this season. Honestly, I think that if you want to look to the trade deadline as a place where teams get redefined, I would say that probably the Edmonton Oilers team history would actually suggest to us, don't. You know, because as much fun as the 2006 trade deadline was, that didn't stay along for the long term. I mean, it is kind of sad to have to say it, but yes, that team very much was a flash in the pan, and that's not what the Edmonton Oilers need to be looking at right now. Right now, they need to only be looking at things that build this team over the long term. Now, realistically, what they need to be worried about more than trying to make big moves at the trade deadline is trying to get some of these prospects developed. You know, but that is another subject for another time. I do hope that Kulikov is a guy that can come and help this team out. I guess we'll just have to wait and see if he actually does.